In the vast expanse of our solar system, among the swirling gas giants and rocky Earth-like planets, an intriguing world lurks, a world larger than the planet Mercury, but orbiting not around the Sun, but around the colossal planet Jupiter. This is Ganymede, the largest satellite in our solar system. Ganymede, covered in a thick, icy shell, has attracted scientists for years. Its battered and scarred surface tells a story that's been billions of years in the making, a story we're only beginning to unravel. Beneath its icy exterior, Ganymede hides secrets that could forever change our view of life in the universe. It's currently the only known moon that has its own magnetic field, and deep beneath its surface, there may be more water than all of the Earth's oceans combined. Today we take a trip to this distant moon. We'll study its recent images and delve into the mysteries these images have begun to reveal. Our story began more than four centuries ago in 1610, when a man named Galileo Galilei pointed his primitive telescope at the night sky. He discovered four points of light orbiting the giant planet Jupiter that forever changed our view of the universe. These were Galileo's satellites, and the largest among them was Ganymede. Galileo's observations of these Galilean moons revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos by providing the first evidence that not all celestial bodies revolve around the Earth. Ganymede is the titan among the satellites. Its diameter is about 3,273 miles. It is the largest moon in our solar system, surpassing even the planet Mercury in size. But size isn't the only thing that sets Ganymede apart. Transported to present day, our ability to study Ganymede has kept pace with technological advances. Modern telescopes, both ground-based and space-based, have given us a clearer picture of this distant moon but it was the advent of space probes that really ushered in a new era of exploration. Spacecraft such as the Galileo Orbiter and the Juno probe have traveled to the Jupiter system to send back to Earth detailed images and data that have allowed us to study Ganymede like never before. These missions have given us a close-up view of Ganymede's surface, revealing its icy terrain and the intriguing patterns etched on it. Ganymede is a moon of contrast. Its surface is a patchwork of two different types of terrain. Darker areas filled with craters and grooves tell of the moon's turbulent past, while lighter areas hint at dynamic and geologically active world. An equally tantalizing aspect of Ganymede lies beneath its icy surface. Scientists believe there is a vast ocean of liquid water beneath the ice, containing more water than all of the Earth's oceans combined. Zeus, known as Jupiter in Roman mythology, took a beautiful mortal boy to become the cupbearer of the gods. This boy's name was Ganymede. It seems appropriate that the moon carries such a large amount of water around Jupiter. But perhaps the most intriguing feature of Ganymede is something we can't see. It's the only moon in our solar system that generates its own magnetic field a trait usually reserved for planets. This magnetic field creates beautiful auroras in Ganymede's rarefied atmosphere, a sight truly worth seeing. The question arises, could this distant, icy world harbor the conditions necessary for life? Our understanding of Ganymede has been greatly enhanced by the daring missions sent to the Jupiter system. One of the most significant of these was the Galileo mission launched by NASA in 1989. Galileo arrived at Jupiter in 1995, embarking on a nearly eight-year mission to study the gas giant and its satellites. The spacecraft made several close flybys of Ganymede, taking detailed pictures of its icy surface and measuring its magnetic field. The data collected by Galileo revolutionized our understanding of Ganymede, revealing its complex geological history and confirming its magnetic field. This feature distinguishes it not only from other satellites, but also from most planets. Ganymede is the only satellite in our solar system that generates its own magnetic field. 
The magnetic field is created by the movement of molten iron in the core of the celestial body, a process similar to that which generates the Earth's magnetic field. However, the main mystery is that judging by the structure of the satellite and its age, the core of Ganymede long ago should have cooled and solidified. But still, how does the Moon create a magnetic field? The answer may lie in a process called tidal heating. As Ganymede orbits Jupiter, the planet's gravitational pull causes the Moon's interior to contract and stretch. To understand tidal heating, let's think about a simple everyday activity – kneading dough. When you knead bread or pizza dough, you're exerting force on it, pushing and pulling in different directions. As you work with the dough, you may notice that it begins to heat up. This is because the force you are applying creates friction within the dough and friction generates heat. That's very similar to how tidal heating works. In the case of Ganymede, the kneading is done by Jupiter's gravitational pull. As Ganymede rotates around Jupiter, the planet's gravity attracts different parts of the Moon with different forces, causing it to bend and stretch. This bending and stretching creates friction within Ganymede and, as with dough, the friction generates heat. This heat could be enough to melt part of Ganymede's interior, creating a layer of liquid metal that would generate the Moon's magnetic field. Among other things, Ganymede's magnetic field is unique in that, unlike Earth's, it's embedded in Jupiter's powerful magnetosphere, creating a complex and dynamic electromagnetic environment. This magnetic field is important for the potential habitability of Ganymede. It creates a magnetosphere around Ganymede that could theoretically protect life on the Moon from harmful solar radiation. In addition, the interaction between Ganymede's magnetic field and Jupiter's magnetosphere produces auroras in Ganymede's thin atmosphere. These auroras have provided scientists with valuable information about the internal structure of Ganymede, for example, confirming the presence of an ocean beneath its surface. More recently, the Juno spacecraft has been studying Jupiter and its satellites. Launched in 2011, Juno's primary mission is to study Jupiter's composition, its gravitational field, magnetic field, and polar magnetosphere. In June 2021, NASA's Juno spacecraft made a close flyby of Ganymede coming within 645 miles of the Moon's surface taking the most detailed images of the Moon's surface to date. The spacecraft's JunoCam imaging system had only 25 minutes to take images of Ganymede, but in that short time, it managed to take five stunning exposures. Interesting fact. Initially, during development, Juno was not equipped with a camera. It was project manager Scott Bolton who insisted, we've got to put a camera on this thing and it was indeed a wise decision. These images show Ganymede's complex and intriguing surface, with a mix of darker areas and strong craters and lighter areas and grooves and patterns. The Juno science team is now comparing these images with those from previous missions, looking for any changes that may have occurred over the past two decades. But taking these pictures wasn't easy. Juno had to rush past Ganymede at 12 miles per second and then glide over the tops of Jupiter's clouds at 36 miles per second. Nevertheless, despite these challenges, the spacecraft managed to take clear and detailed images of Ganymede, giving us an unprecedented view of this fascinating moon. These images are not only visually stunning, but they're also key to understanding Ganymede's geology and the potential for life. For example, the images show light and dark areas on Ganymede's ice shell, indicating differences in the purity and composition of the ice. This information can help scientists understand how Ganymede's ice shell formed and how it's changed over time. So let's take a closer look at the dynamic geologic history of this moon. The dark regions are considered the oldest parts of Ganymede's surface, some four billion years old. They are heavily cratered, indicating they have been relatively stable for a long period, bearing the scars of countless impacts. In contrast, the lighter colored groove regions are younger and indicate more recent geologic activity. These regions are modeled with intricate patterns of ridges and ditches, some of them more than a mile high and hundreds of miles long. 
These furrowed landforms are thought to have formed as a result of tectonic activity caused by the previously mentioned tidal heating from Ganymede's elliptical orbit around Jupiter. When the Moon bends and stretches under Jupiter's gravitational pull, it releases heat that can cause the icy surface to crack and regenerate. This process can create faults and cracks in the surface, resulting in the ridges and grooves we see today. It is a process similar to plate tectonics on Earth, but in a much colder and alien environment. Thus, by studying these geologic features, we not only learn about Ganymede's past, we also gain insight into geologic processes that may occur on other icy moons and planets, helping us to understand the diversity of worlds in our solar system and beyond. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of Ganymede, one question arises, could this icy moon harbor life? While we don't yet have definitive answers, some features of Ganymede make this a tantalizing assumption. First, it's believed that Ganymede has an underground ocean of liquid water more than 100 kilometers deep. This ocean is warmed by heat generated with tidal bends. On Earth, wherever we find water, we find life. So the presence of a vast ocean on Ganymede opens up the possibility of life there perhaps in an environment similar to Earth's deep-sea hydrothermal vents. These vents, spewing mineral-rich water heated by the Earth's interior, are teeming with life forms that thrive in extreme conditions. Could similar vents exist on Ganymede, providing the conditions necessary for life? Second, Ganymede's thin oxygen atmosphere, although not suitable for human respiration due to the low density, could potentially support some forms of microbial life. On Earth, some microbes are known to survive in extremely rarefied atmospheres, such as those at high altitudes of mountains. Although conditions on Ganymede are harsh and very different from those on Earth, life as we know it has proven to be incredibly adaptable and able to survive in a wide variety of environments. Thus, the possibility of life on Ganymede, while somewhat speculative, cannot be ruled out. As future missions explore this fascinating satellite in more detail, we may yet find answers to these questions. Who knows what secrets Ganymede may reveal? However, it's very important to be aware of the challenges and limitations of exploring such a distant and alien world. First, the sheer distance. Ganymede orbits Jupiter, which is about 484 million miles from Earth. Even traveling at the speed of light, it takes more than 40 minutes for a signal to travel from Earth to Ganymede and back. This makes real-time control of spacecraft impossible and means that missions to Ganymede must be able to operate autonomously for long periods. In addition, the harsh conditions of Ganymede itself make themselves felt, the surface temperature of negative 276 degrees Fahrenheit and it's exposed to intense radiation from Jupiter's magnetosphere. Any spacecraft that visits Ganymede must be designed to withstand these extreme conditions. And finally, there's the problem of interpreting the data we're getting. Images and other data from Ganymede must be transmitted hundreds of millions of miles through space and then analyzed by scientists on Earth. This process requires sophisticated technology and expertise and there's always some degree of inaccuracy involved. It's not to say that current interpretations are wrong, but rather our understanding of Ganymede is constantly evolving as new data is collected and analyzed. Although the scientific community seems to be in general agreement on the main features of Ganymede, there's also some uncertainties. One major point of contention is the source and nature of the plumes observed on Ganymede's surface. Some scientists believe these plumes are caused by water from the interior of the moon being pushed through its icy crust, similar to the plumes observed on Saturn's satellite Enceladus and possibly Jupiter's satellite Europa. Incidentally, we've already debated whether there is life on Europa in another video. Similarly, while the existence of subsurface ocean on Ganymede is supported by several lines of evidence, the exact properties of this ocean, such as depth, composition, ability to harbor life, all still the subject of ongoing research and debate. Despite these challenges, our quest to explore Ganymede and other distant worlds continue. Each challenge we overcome brings us one step closer to understanding our place in the universe. 
As we traveled through the mysteries of Ganymede, it became apparent that our exploration of this fascinating satellite is far from over. NASA and other space agencies around the world have ambitious plans to explore the Jupiter system. The European Space Agency's JUICE, their mission launched April 14, 2023, from the Guiana Space Center on an Ariane 5 launch vehicle, and it will make detailed observations of Ganymede and other Galilean moons, Europa and Callisto. The Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer will be equipped with a suite of 10 advanced instruments capable of studying the surface and interior of Ganymede with unprecedented precision. It'll map the moon's icy envelope and underlying ocean, study the composition of its surface and atmosphere, and further explore its unique magnetic field. Beyond JUICE, there are proposals for even more ambitious missions. These include landers, rovers, and even submarines to explore Ganymede's ocean. While still in the conceptual stage, these missions represent the bold, innovative thinking that will be required to fully unlock the secrets of Ganymede. As we look to the future, one thing is clear. Ganymede remains a tempting place for scientific exploration. Its unique geology, magnetic field, and potential for life make it a solid target in the ongoing quest to understand the workings of the solar system and our place in it.